Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to use the Docker volume in your .NET project. So this is a real time uh, demo that I am going to do. So the, this part of video will cover how to do this Docker volume setup in your local and see how these uh, volumes are mounted outside the container so that you don't lose any of the information even the container stops and starts again or even the container gets deleted. That's the whole idea and come let's get started. So in all my previous video I was using the Cosmos DB Web API as the base application so I'm going to use the same thing uh, even for this demo. So what you see on my screen is the Cosmos DB Web API that we were using it and there is something called uh, user controller right. So user controller so far did not have a mechanism to upload a user profile image. So what we are going to do is I'm going to add two more uh, endpoints which will be uh, helping us to upload an image and then the second endpoint is to download an image. So how are we going to use the docker volume concept in this concept, right? So the, the idea is we will be uploading the uh, user's image into a particular folder location, which will be sitting in, in, in our current uh, hard drive, okay? It will not be in the container. And the virtual location is slash app slash uploads. This is the virtual location where the images will be stored and retried. And one person can upload more than one profile image and how much ever they upload, it will be uploaded with a particular timestamp. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Now, let's go back to this Docker file. What you have to do is you need to have the folder created. Okay, that's the first step for the Docker volume. So what we will do is we will add a command called run make directory, mkdirs make directory and just say slash app slash uploads. This will ensure the folders are created when the application starts using the Docker configuration. Okay, that's the whole idea. In case you're not starting through the Docker configuration, then, uh, you know, the folder has to be created by yourself. Now, let's stick to this. I'm gonna go into the Docker. I'm going to open the Docker uh, desktop, clear off all the images containers so that it is all empty. Whatever we are going to do is going to be brand new and brand uh, new from the scratch. Okay, so I open up uh, this location where the project is there. I'm going to build my project as an image, right, using the Docker file. And then we are going to run the image that is sitting, uh, or I would say the image that we created, right? So using the image that we created, we will run it in our uh, container, the Docker uh, desktop container. So that's how uh, in the real world when you deploy to an application it will work, right? So when I do this uh, Docker build, okay, so this error is, uh, you know, there was a configuration mismatch in the Docker file, but don't worry, by the time you get this code, uh, it will be all good. So let me do this in one time. I fixed my, all right, so there was some problem in the command. So here you go. We will use the docker build and then the docker file was moved. Uh, so the command is all same in order to build the image. We'll use the docker build command and the image is built, which means if you do a, a docker uh, images, it should give us an image name that is there in our local, which is the docker desktop. Okay, so that should be there. Now, what we will do is we will use a command to run this image, which was built. Okay, so docker run dash t is in detached mode, dash p is the port mapping. 8080 port is mapped to the containers port 80. Okay, here is the next important thing. When you run this for the docker volume, we use a command called dash v and followed by here you say the the if you remember we were using a uh, app slash upload right so we are doing a configuration saying that under c colons under uh, app slash uploads that is the virtual or the, uh, that's the absolute path map to the virtual path called slash app slash upload so the application uh, will eventually go and write the file to the c colon that's the docker volume so docker volume will preserve uh, the information uh, even after the docker container has been stopped, deleted or restarted. Whatsoever it is, it will preserve it. Now we will name this container, uh, a meaningful name, just for the namesake of running this application. And then once you hit enter, uh, this is what, how, uh, this is how the application runs. Okay, so you see this, the container now started showing and I click on it 
and I do a swagger for that the application should start not only that when you now use the endpoints which is to upload the image and retrieve the image you should be able to do it so the whole concept of here is we are mapping an absolute path of our local drive to a virtual path of something which is uh, which is sitting in our application application has no idea where it is going but when we run this container it knows where to store the data okay similarly when the container starts again it's it knows uh, based on the docker volume information that we give dash v followed by the mapping it knows where to retrieve the data as long as both the volumes are same okay it's time for the demo i will use this uh, upload uh, endpoint and let's give a name so that name is what it gets appended uh, so i will choose a file for this i'll choose the profile image of the learn smart coding and then do a hit it was successful right so which means ideally it should have got stored under the c colon apps folder now let's try a retry also i give a main name of the user and it should show me the image see the image was having this name let's go to the c colon apps uploads and here you go here is the name so now what happens this these files are physically sitting if you restart this container delete this container do whatsoever you want as long as the volume is mapped to the same place when you run the container the image will still be there you can upload many images you can you can you know retrieve the data that's how the docker volume comes into picture docker volume is very important uh, concept uh, when you learn about dockers where you preserve the information it could be log file it could be it could be anything you know uh, physically sitting somewhere else the container doesn't have any idea how to preserve it and that's how docker volumes comes into picture now let's do another important thing uh, with a similar uh, local host thing so i wanted to uh, log all my application logs to my local place okay whenever the application the container starts uh, i need to access that log information so in order to do that i'm going to use serilog.sync.files that's a special package uh, specifically for writing something into the file system i will be using this package and uh, i will install that package then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to this existing uh, serilog information and after this i'm going to paste a piece of information basically i'm saying hey uh, this is the place where you need to log which will be slash app slash log slash application dot log okay write all this information to this file and rest of the items on all is for uh, incremental creation of files and so on so okay um, that's it I'm not going to do anything else but right now seri log has no idea what is slash app slash logs it has no idea of where is this location as far as uh, where is this folder and all, all those things right so we need to we change this information so we need to do a rebuild of this uh, image i'm going to delete this image so that everything looks uh, again you know you don't need to feel that it was already built i'm going to show you lively that i'm going to do everything from the first so we have upload concept we have the log information concepts both both are stored as a, a mapped uh, like using the docker volume we're going to store these two outside the container okay it's not inside the container it's going to store outside the container and whenever the container stops and reads like the restarts all those informations are still preserved so we built the image which means the latest image has both the codes the upload code as well as the serilog.sync.file code okay so long uh, as long as uh, you're following me these two are now configured now next is we use the similar image i mean we use the similar command to uh, run the application this time we do two volume mapping one is for upload and the other one we say dash v goes to temp app slash logs temp app we can just put it back to the apps okay so we're going to change this c colon apps slash log here also c colon apps slash uploads so because you remember make directory had a uh, two directory creator under this one only okay so now these two are uh, these two are done unable to find the image okay maybe there was no image let's see what is the mistake 
Okay, there was a mistake with the name, uh, so I corrected it. It's just a task manager API, it's not web API. Okay, so I run this and I go to the Swagger URL. Now, the application started. Basically, the Siri log should have written something there. Let's go back to C colon apps. You see this, there was a folder created automatically and there was a file created by the Siri log. Now, if you ask me why didn't you put this in the make directory because Siri log will automatically create the folder. It is not like upload. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, I and um, you know you can still retrieve the image because we deleted the container and we started the container right which means the images which are there still uh, do exist and uh, as long as the volume mapping is there it is going to retrieve information that's what you're seeing on my screen so we were able to retrieve uh, information for this user see now i will show another demo i'm going to stop this container if i stop this container basically there won't be any api available so if i hit on execute it will probably fail saying that it is not able to uh, do even this call okay and if i start this container again and if i do an execute ideally the container was stopped and started right so i am able to still get the data that's what preserving the information outside the container and we are doing these things and we were able to achieve this only through the docker volume and i hope you enjoy this video and i will see you in the next video and that video will be interesting that video is all about doing a similar stuff with the azure file system and uh, storage azure storage container for the docker volume thanks for watching if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!